Well, I'm still at it, guys. I am working now on the 9mm Luger cases. We started this process in our last video. If you missed that video, don't worry, the link is in the description below. And what we did in that video, we started looking at case preparation, specifically all the way through resizing, full length resizing of 556 five, cases. We did 10 of those, and today we're going to start, we're starting right now, working with 10 of these 9mm Luger cases. I just finished uh, opening my journal entry. Today's date, the number or the name of the cartridge, 9mm Luger, and the quantity of cases that I'm starting with, 10. And as you just saw, I completed the wipe down procedure. Now on pistol cases like this 9mm Luger, 45 ACP, those sorts of things, straight walled cases uh, like these, we do not need to lube. So I'm just going to cross that off. I'm not going to say I did it. I'm just going to put a cross uh, strike through on that, indicating I didn't do it. Um, case head fracture, uh, I've never ever seen a 9mm or pistol case where we have uh, case head fracturing. I just have never seen it, and you could just do a real quick visual inspection if you're concerned with that, but um, I'm not, I normally don't do that. I just don't do that for pistol cases. We talked about that a lot with our previous video. Definitely a mandatory step when you're dealing with bottleneck um, center fire rifle cases. So I'm going to cross that off also. And now we're going to go ahead and do some resizing. Now we're going to talk today a lot more about resizing. We're going to start kicking it up and talk about some extreme resizing. How can we make it any better than what we're doing right now? There are ways that we can do this better. There's also some things that you need to understand about this resizing process. We'll be talking about um, full length resizing variability in full length resizing based on the type of die that you purchased and also we're going to talk about neck sizing only. Then we're going to get into some case measurements like case head expansion, length tests, trim some of the cases as necessary. We won't trim 9mm cases number one, I've never needed to. And number two, if you have a long 9mm case, something's probably wrong with it, I just chuck it. Same thing with my 45 ACP and 44 mag and so on. All right, folks, we've got a lot of ground to cover, and I'm going to try to do that in about the next 20 minutes. But before we leave the topic of resizing um, and resizing dies, let me talk a little bit more about this. Uh, I've been talking about using full length resizing dies. Now that does exactly like you think it would, which is it is going to resize that brass case its full length. Well, that's a little bit, just a little bit of a misnomer because that head portion of the case is not resized. A couple of reasons for that is number one, that is pretty much solid brass, save for the flash hole. And so it's really hard to resize that. You probably don't even want to resize that. And as a result of that, oftentimes what you'll see at the head or just above the head portion of that case, after it's been resized, you'll see it a little bit different coloration might look like sort of a brighter coloration just to the rear or aft side of that case. And some people think, uh oh, that's a incipient case head fracture. It's going to blow up on me. Well, no, that, that's not what that is. That simply is the point where that resizing die stopped resizing that case. It's as far as it could go. The Case head fracture 
that you're going to feel will be on the inside. You'll never see it first on the outside. You'll see it really late on the outside. Boy, hope you catch it before then. So just understand that. Now, the other type of resizing that you'll hear about is called neck sizing or neck sizing only. And that's a different type of die that you use. Um, now, when I first started reloading in the latter part, mid to latter part of the 1980s, um, early 1980s actually, I did full length resizing. As far as I was concerned, I wanted that case brought right back down to those specs, Sammy specs, and I did not, um, I did not want to neck size only. Uh, a lot of folks in those days were, oh gosh, you got a neck size, what, what are you doing, you know? Um, you're going to wreck the life of your brass. You've got to start neck sizing. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. Well, eventually I gave it a try um, and I started doing some neck sizing when I uh, started using the 243 Winchester, did some neck sizing with the 308 Winchester and um, it seemed to work pretty good. I had one rifle for each of those calibers and uh, when you do that, What's happening is so the, the chamber itself, you're going to insert that loaded case, whether it's a factory load or one of your own reloads, you're going to insert that into that chamber, close up the action, fire it, and what happens then, just in a nutshell real quick, is that case is going to expand both in a lengthwise direction, called an axial direction, as well as outward to fill that chamber, that's called a radial direction. So it's expanding and then it contracts just a little bit and as you pull it out, extract that case, uh, bolt action or a, um, uh, a falling block Ruger number one, I have several of those, you're extracting that case uh, because the case has a little bit of a taper, it comes right out, but it is now out of spec. So folks call that fire forming. I have just fire formed that brass to my chamber. It's going to be great. It's just going to be the greatest thing in the world. And so I'm only going to neck size that thing. And that's cool. That's okay. Uh, so I started neck sizing for that exact same reason. To prolong also the length of the, uh, the life of that brass. I don't think I ever saw any improvements in precision with um, neck sized only brass or fire formed brass, but I started doing that. But then we got another 308 Winchester and oh boy, that was a semi-automatic HK uh, MR762 rifle, semi-automatic uh, gas gun. And wow, I tell you, that generous chamber that's on the Ruger Precision Rifle. It's a, it's a, it's a generous chamber. Fire-formed brass there will make an absolute mess of that, um, of a jam in that, especially in that gas gun, that semi-automatic HK MR762. What a mess. Oh boy. So then I'm like, okay, and I still have some of this. I have some, some brass that was fired in the, um, Ruger precision rifle that can only go back into the Ruger precision rifle until I run them through or I just resize the whole thing again, which I don't really want to do. I've got several hundred of those. And then I have another set of brass clearly marked for the HK rifle. I don't want to keep doing that, so ultimately I will uh, start resizing all the brass so that it fits and works really, really well in that MR762, as well as my Ruger Precision Rifle. Now I was actually full length resizing that 308 brass and it should, it should have cycled fine. Uh, some of that stuff was neck size but some of the stuff I was full length resizing it. And I was using some very nice dies. Now what I have in this box uh, it is an RCBS box, but my sizing die, my full length sizing die in here is a Redding full length sizing die and it actually uses a neck bushing inside of it to make sure that the 
outside diameter, external diameter of the neck is exactly the size that I want it to. And that is kind of getting extreme. Do you need something like this just to reload safe and reliable ammo? No, not at all, not at all. But the way that this works, let me show you this while we're talking about it, is I will somewhat disassemble this die. And then inside here, I have this titanium coated um, neck bushing that my Ruger precision rifle likes this 0 0.334 inch. But even so, the way that this one sizes the 308 brass isn't sufficient for that chamber on that HK rifle. I did a little bit of research. Why is that happening? We're coming right back into Sammy Speck, but what in the world's going on? Um, I think it had something to do with how far down that uh, die actually resizes the brass. So what I did is I purchased another die just for that HK. Give that thing a try. And this is what's called an RCBS uh, small base die, small base resizing die. Still full length resizing, but a small base. Designed especially, the small base dies are designed especially for AR and semi-automatic gas guns. This did a beautiful job and we have not had any problems whatsoever with that HK ever since I started using that. Now the lesson there is if you're going to be reloading an AR-10 HK uh, MR762, HK417, uh, those um, types of guns, uh, you would be well advised to get that small base die from RCBS. Like I said, it does a beautiful job. Do you need a small base die for 223 and 556? Nope, I've never had a problem at all with those. Of course, the only type of rifle I have for 223 and 556 is AR-15 and uh, my Tavor. So both gas guns, very similar in that way. And uh, when I resize those, I've never had any problem. I don't need that small base die for that. Now, if you want to make sure, we're going to get extreme now, that you um, are sizing as far down on that case as possible and that the specs of the die and the resulting case dimensions are as perfect as possible, as absolutely close as possible to uh, SAMI specs, well, then you're, wanna, you're gonna wanna step it up a notch and I have gone with Wilson um, equipment or dies for this. And this is, um, in particular, this is for my 300 PRC. Okay, when I, I haven't started loading that yet, um, but this is the die I have chosen for it. Again, is this required for the absolute basics, bare necessities? No, it's not. You want to kick it up a notch, get things as absolutely um, precise and consistent as possible, go to something like this. Now, once you've finished resizing, I don't care if you've used, if you did use neck sizing only, um, you did standard full length sizing, small base sizing, whatever, it's a good idea to make sure that that brass does still meet spec. So here is some 308 Winchester brass. This is the stuff that I have set up to work uh, in my son's HK rifle. And I have purchased some, uh, again, Wilson. I started buying a lot of Wilson stuff. Um, this is a Wilson gauge specifically for the 308 Winchester. The way that this thing works is we will drop this case in here and if this case protrudes above this die, the top of the die itself, it's too long. If it sinks below 
the recess cut into this die, it's too short. If it sits somewhere between that and ideally flush with that recess, then it's, it's just perfect, spot on perfect. That case should also fall free. Excellent way to test, especially when you're first setting up your dies. How do you set up your dies? I didn't talk about that before we even started uh, full length sizing or resizing these things. So the way that it works is you're going to thread that die into the press, fully thread it in there, and the, the setting that you want to have, I mean how deep do you thread it in, what you want to do is raise the ram to its uh, uh, top position, but then I will thread that die in until it barely touches, it makes contact, so the bottom of the die is making contact with the top of the shell holder. Make sure you got your shell holder, the correct shell holder, in place before you do this. It's all part of that process. Then I will tighten the lock ring on that die. I will um, raise the handle and lower the ram. And then I will loosen up that lock ring just a little bit and turn the die down just a little bit more raise that ram again, and you should feel a little bit what we call a cam over, a little bit of, of resistance, and you pop that um, handle down just a little bit more. You should be able to see what I'm talking about here. That is then a properly adjusted resizing die. Now, you're, some manufacturers have different um, steps, so be sure to follow the steps for the die manufacturer that you're using. I happen to be accustomed to RCBS dies, Hornady dies are very, very similar, um, but make sure that you follow that. But in a general rule of thumb, that's what we like to have, or that's what we need to have to set back that shoulder, affect a full length resizing, get that case back into SAMI specs. Okay, we've got our cases sized, we've talked about resizing, we've talked about all different sorts of resizing dies. Let's move on to the next step of our reloading process. And again, I'm going to go back to my checklist, and the next step is, it, it says here, CHE measurements check provide the max here. Okay, so what that is, is case head expansion, and for this, you're going to need, and I, I talked about needing this, I talked about this equipment earlier, you're going to need a nice um, digital caliper. Well, it doesn't have to be digital. I like this uh, digital caliper, really easy to use. We'll go ahead and um, start this up. Make sure you always have it zero. Do not store, do not store it with the jaws absolutely closed. Always leave them open just a little bit. Um, and now what I'm going to do, now that I have a um, zeroed and calibrated um, caliper, I'm going to take one of my cases here, and I'm going to measure the case head expansion. And I try to set that just above the web area on the inside, uh, somewhere in that general area, and what we're getting here is 3.72, 0.372. What's max on a 5.56? 0.375. Why do I remember that? Just because I've loaded and tested so many of these things. And I kind of remember it like, okay, that's the size of a 375 H&H &H Magnum. I don't know. That's what sticks in my mind. But we do that, and we do that for every case. Don't just sample it check that for every case. And if 372 was the maximum of all these 10 cases, then I'm going to write down on my sheet, all are less than or equal to the maximum, 0 0.372. So we do that. Now we don't do that step for pistol cases. It's unnecessary. Once again, a little bit of a difference uh, between loading centerfire rifle cases versus centerfire pistol cases. 
Then the next step on our checklist says length test. Okay, well, what you could do is you could use this again. This is kind of a slow process. So what I like to do instead is I like to use a gauge. Okay, this is a handy little gauge. Lyman's gauge here. It's an aluminum gauge. Find the size of the case that you're working with. There we have 223. The length of a 223 is the same as the length of a 556, so they didn't list it twice in here. So now I'm going to take this case, same case, I'm going to simply run it into this thing, and hey, I'm lucky. This one is sufficiently short. It, it made it, okay? Let's grab another one. Let's go through this. Well, that's amazing. Every one of these 10 cases that I resized meets the spec. They are not too long. I'll find one that is long enough. I've got plenty. Uh, and normally, I'll have 25 to even 50 percent of my cases will be too long, and then they need to be um, trimmed. I'll show you how to do that. We also check the length on the 9mm Luger or any of our pistol cases. So we do the same thing. We're going to run this in. If we find any that are too long, I'm going to chuck these. Okay, not, not, it's not worth it on 9mm Luger to think about or even try to trim these. And as expected, those 9mm were all just fine, perfectly fine. So, that wraps up what we're working on in this episode of Extreme Reloading. In the next episode, we're going to start, I will find some 5.56 brass that needs to be trimmed. We're going to talk about trimming. We're also going to, and we're going to do it from the bare necessities, the real basic way of trimming. And we're also going to kick it up a notch uh, to some extreme trimming using a Wilson case trimmer uh, and the 308 Winchester I'll be using for that uh, demonstration and that discussion. You don't want to miss that next episode of Extreme Reloading. We're going to cover some good ground again. Thanks for watching. Hey, if you've got a question, a comment, or some observations, please put those into the comments section below. Take care.